Pep Guardiola arrived in Manchester a couple of months after the Brexit vote. The glee with which his struggles have been received in England has been seen by some as another example of the mistrust of the elites which appears to have swept the country. After all, who is more sophisticated than Pep? His interests extend far beyond football. When he left Barcelona, he took a sabbatical in New York. A team bonding session for the players this week involved Pep taking them to see La La Land. He has friends with chess grandmasters and film directors. I'm sure he eats quinoa and drinks flat whites. He is the metropolitan elite. But maybe Pep represents something else. Maybe his struggles at Manchester City contain another lesson for Brexit. Beware of the ideologues. Remember those pictures of Michael Gove and Boris Johnson looking miserable the morning after the voters had taken the country back? Think then of Pep, poor beleaguered Pep, after Manchester City had beaten Burnley and he had to face the interviewers who wanted to know his thoughts. Right now, Pep appears tortured by his ideology and the lens he has to go to defend it. Pep's vision is a truly seductive one, and we have all seen it at its most glorious. Like the extreme Brexiteers, Pep doesn't want a pragmatic arrangement. He has a vision and he demands that it's realised. But can Pep return to that world again? Can he get his country back when he doesn't have Messi, Xavi or Iniesta to deliver it? He removed Joe Hart and has relied on players like Claudio Bravo and John Stones to implement his vision. He has remained true to his principles, and so far they've failed. We know how glorious it could be if Pep could create a utopia in Manchester. But is it asking for too much? And in wanting too much, will Pep destroy it all?